Welcome back to Shung Yu and Tan Chim Lake. Just waiting for the start of the Africa. men's pair. Hungary. Going through the teams. Italy. USA on the far side one. Russia. South Africa, Hungary. Netherlands. Italy, Russia, Russia. Netherlands in lanes four, five and six. And uh, the numbers, as you'll know, on the bow. So uh, identification a whole lot easier in rowing than it is in many sports. Keeping an eye out here for boat number four, the Italians here. They were very quick off in the uh, semi-finals there with a 134 first 500 and fastest times from both those semi-finals. So wants to watch the Italians in number four. And already uh, they've got a good start, but uh, they've been matched, if not bettered, by the South Africans in the early stages. Leo Victor Davis and uh, Jake Green for South Africa. The Italians with uh, Farrezi and Justelin. And then on the near side, the Dutch have started well as well. Timmer and Schmitz. Russia were the defending champions. Uh, Russia, Ukraine and France, the medalists in uh, Kazan, Shaukin and Shininchnikov winning for Russia two years ago. Well, it's the Dutch who've uh, laid down the early marker and the early pace. Will they pay? That's a really good start from the Dutch. I mean, they posted a 133 in, the, uh, in, their, in, their, in their first 500 of their semi-final, so it's worth keeping an eye on them for this early start. Where they can hold that pace to the finish, we'll, be, we'll have to see. Well, I must say, I... One, one race I particularly enjoy is the single skulls where your Drysdales and, and, and the big names tend to go so slowly off the start compared to everyone else and then just wind it up and make their move usually between uh, 1,000 and 1,500 metres. Uh, and, and you can see the whole field, uh, number one can go to number six in the space of the last couple of hundred. That's right. With, in those singles racing, it's a bit more tactical and you can sort of, you know, you can pick your moment as when to kill off your opponents. Uh, similar in the pairs actually because obviously you, um, you know, you're sharing the work on one blade on each side um, so it can be quite similar in the pairs so we could expect some fireworks later on in the race from this particularly from the, uh, the Italians or the, um, or the South Africans but in, in so many sports, your coaches are always saying, race your own race. Uh, in so many races, they say a consistent pace is faster than a sprint followed by a, a survival tactics. Uh, but in rowing, it's almost impossible not to take into account what the other teams are doing. But surely uh, a world-class crew has established how they get the quickest time from A to B over that 2,000-meter course. That's right. So we saw in the, in the heavyweight coxes sports there, we saw the Dutch go off very, very fast. And it's um, you can see... Obviously, they've trained together because their pair has also gone off very, very fast. Now they just have to watch out they don't get overhauled in that last 500 like we saw in the men's fours race. Um, and already you can see the Italians trying to put some pressure on the Dutch. Uh, so boat number four, the Italians racing boat number six, uh, uh, the bottom of our screen, the Dutch. So, so you're saying that a crew will establish uh, whether they need to go fast at the start and, and the crews that uh, need to start slowly will know that they will produce a better result if they start steady and build later on. Yeah, that is true. So you're based on the training program that's been structured and the physiology of the athletes. You'll work out the sort of optimal way to attack that 2,000 metres, whether to go out hard and try and lead all the way or whether to maybe just be a little bit more within yourself and not overdo the lactic acid and, and the, the sort of pain and strain and then, and then be a bit more stronger feature later on in the race. So the Netherlands and Italy 1 and 2 at the halfway marker, 3.18.64 on the clock. Hungary in third position, certainly not out of this one, only 2.53 behind and a good battle going on for that bronze medal position at the moment. The Russians have been left behind, disappointed. The Russians a much weaker team than we've seen or we saw from them, obviously in Kazan as locals, they knew exactly what to do. I guess, I guess money comes into it. Uh, and, and rowing, one of the reasons it's optional is because it's quite an expensive event to put on and not all the countries that host these have regatta courses ready. That's right to say, actually. So this is a, a newly built regatta course built for the uh, 2013 um, World Championships. And um, it's interesting to have a regatta infrastructure, but also uh, boat infrastructure. All the boats are the same here, so obviously that's been supplied to try and reduce the cost for the uh, nations coming to this event. So everyone is using the same shape holes, which you don't often see in... in um, in rowing races often you'll see a lot of mixes of brands of manufacturers which can range in prices 
very nice rowing from the Italians there. Very dynamic round the back. You can see them just whipping it along. They're really trying to get away from the crews behind them. A little bit more sticky in the uh, in the Dutch boat there. Just getting stuck at, with the hand at the back end of the stroke. Ferrarese in the bow for the Italians. Seems to have a slightly higher arm action than uh, than uh, Bustelin in the stroke. Is that right? Uh, yeah, he is, he is really trying to loop it on there. He's trying to really get connected. Uh, good intentions, I'm sure, but yeah, you know, trying to refine all those little movements to make things really economical. Hungarians there just coming to shot, having a good look round of where they were. They were pretty quick in the early heats. 6.46, the Hungarians' time. Actually, they were uh, three seconds quicker than the Italians, who uh, head them at the moment by 1.94. So a reversal of form at the moment, but that uh, last 400 is going to be tough. And there's plenty of time for Hungary to come from uh, their position third at the moment. They're in lane three, Italy in lane four. And uh, that switch of camera with the bridal light on the far side make the numbers slightly harder to read but uh, this time we can see it number six that's the Dutch who are looking good looking good the Dutch in for a medal whether they can catch team four the Italians I'm not sure it's Italy who lead Hungary the quickest in the heat trailing at the moment but working hard suddenly up the work rate but as they do it the Italians respond and the Dutch look to be fading a little as we come into the final couple of hundred meters it's still Italy but Hungary are on the charge Bella Simone having a good look round there. He's spotted where they are and now he's really going for it. He's really turned the boosters on and they're, they're off, aren't they? They're really taking, taking inches and inches into that boat straight away. Well, we've seen uh, the leaders hang on in most of the races today. It's half a length. It's going, isn't it? It Down is to disappearing a stroke by stroke. Now the Italians try to raise their game. 40 metres to go. It's still Italy, but Hungary coming strong. A sensational finish from the Hungarians to take the gold medal. Fastest in the heats. And somehow they produce the finish of the championship so far to take the gold ahead of the Italians who desperately dug as deep as they could but it wasn't enough on the occasion that shows that you never give up in a rowing race because somehow they produced a wonderful last 200 meters and they cut that fine phenomenal power there phenomenal finish to do that in that sort of race you know especially to be a length or so more down well yeah let's hope we see a replay of that because that was that was brilliant and, and although they didn't look quite as smooth over those last 200 meters but it was it was just pure guts and and, and one with the head really they got the traction and then they got the momentum to take them through and they were just eating into that lead here we go is this this is earlier on in the race isn't it sadly well at this stage uh, the dutch are the uh, team to uh, lead it out but it wasn't long but before Hungary and Italy the two quickest times teams from the uh, heats established themselves and then the Italians at this stage going through the halfway stage just uh, getting a meter or so ahead of the Dutch but then it was all about the Hungarians in the last 500. Brilliant finish, and what a way to finish our coverage for today. Just a reminder that, uh, of course, we've got more rowing coming up uh, tomorrow. And uh, busy programme, of course, next weekend, the last of the three World Cups taking place in Lucerne. There you have confirmation, 6.34.94, so 12 seconds quicker than Hungary were in the heats. They saved the best till last. Brilliant. Well, uh, just in case you are free tomorrow, 14.30. Remember, that's European time. So uh, 1.30 if you're watching in the UK for continued coverage of the rowing at the Universiad Games. Well, thanks uh, very much to Adam Freeman Puss for his uh, company today and uh, expert analysis of the races. Uh, do join us tomorrow for continuation. Remember, we'll have the single skulls and then we'll finish it off with the powerhouses. The men and women's eights should be a great climax to this regatta. We've already seen some brilliant racing. So thanks for your company and join us tomorrow if you can. If not, make sure you catch the World Cup at the weekend. It's goodbye from me and goodbye from Adam.